Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study, but I can definitely help you. Follow along with me, y'all. The Bible and the Book of Mormon are the holy word of God. I'll be reading and expounding from the Book of Mormon, but we can definitely talk about the Bible. Leave me a comment below. Make sure y'all click that like button. It helps out a brother, y'all. It helps out a brother. And today's number is six verses. This will be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Third Nephi, chapter 25. At the second coming, the proud and the wicked shall be burned as stubble. Elijah shall return before that great and dreadful day. Similar to Malachi chapter 4. Verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 6, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And that concludes the chapter. Now with these verses, verse 6 in particular, about turning the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. This relates to family history work. And we all know this or should know this, but genealogy, researching our ancestors, taking their names to the temple so we could do the ordinances for them. Specifically here, this has helped me personally. My father has passed away about 16 years now. He was not a member of the church. However, because of this promise here and family's history work and the temple being available, I was able to do his baptism and do ordinance for him. So because I was able to do that, which is a huge blessing for us all, specifically, this is what happened. The heart of my father has turned to me. My heart has turned to my father. We'll forever be connected because of this promise and this blessing. So specifically, the thing I want to help everyone to understand of how important family history work is. Now, I know we got a bunch of things going on, school, work. We got hobbies, you know, hanging out with friends and all that type of stuff. That is good to do. But we should definitely give a priority to researching our ancestors and doing their work in the temple. Specifically, what is helping me as I reorganize my schedule so I make more time to do family history work, we need to all understand what is called the body clock. Now, this is not spiritual doctrine here that I'm trying to teach or help people understand when it comes to the body clock. However, you can relate it in a way to the word of wisdom, which is taking care of your body, understanding your body, keeping it strong. So with this body clock understanding, everyone's body has a certain rhythm where you have a high, medium, and low level of energy. So specifically for me, family history work is something that probably takes medium or low energy. So you don't necessarily need to have that high energy to do family history work. So the reason why I bring this to your attention, because for me personally, as I've been doing these, the Book of Mormon videos, I need to have high energy to do these. So when I schedule my recordings, I do it at a certain time where my energy is at its zenith. So I can be that much closer to the spirit. So I'm not distracted by my body being weak or out of tune and all that type of stuff. Obviously, you want to take care of your body again, but we're mortals. And there's a certain limit, you can say, to our energy level. It rises and falls. So you need to understand that rhythm or your body clock. So for me personally, again, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to schedule family history work with my energy level at, a, at its high peak. I don't need to do that. 
I can schedule other things that require that higher energy. What I'll do is schedule it more when I have medium or low energy. So that's something that may help people because I know we think that we got a bunch of things going on, but it also gets to the point, y'all, where you got to be willing to sacrifice, give up some things, reduce some time somewhere else so you can fit time for family history work. So when we think about it that way, that should help us and understand better because we don't want to feel like, where well, there's not enough time. No, there's, a, there's plenty of time in a day. It's what you're doing with those hours. Where is all your time going? So that's why we got to really look at our schedule, reevaluate, understand our energy level again, reduce time in certain areas, or completely forget about things. Take it off your list. Get rid of hobbies in order to replace it for family history work. So those are the things we can do. But ultimately, pray to Heavenly Father. He can guide us. And I'll wrap up with my testimony. That I know prophets are real, be it Moses, Malachi, Elijah, Joel, Isaiah, Joseph Smith Jr., President Monson, President Nelson. They are all holy men that have been called of God to help us to expound on the scriptures, to better understand, also to prophesy and help us prepare for those things to come, which include I testify that the second coming is real. It can be any day now that the Savior returns. So we need to be ready. The only way to be ready is to repent daily, to strengthen our testimony, build our faith in the atonement to where we know that it is real and we become purified because of his sacrifice and our willingness to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. I know that when he returns, if we did everything within our power to be like him, we will rejoice with him because we did what he asked us to do, which is to try, focus on perfection. But obviously, we need to keep striving for that, to repent daily, to always to be thinking about him. And I know if we do these things, we will be blessed. We will be filled with the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us. Ultimately, will feel the love of the Savior and the love of our Heavenly Father. And I leave y'all with my testimony in the name of the Redeemer of our souls, Jesus Christ. Amen.